couple of months ago, I was asked to participate in a debate organized by IBM and um, Bloomberg News. And the discussion centered on the question, is the space race between the US and China good for humanity? Oh, interesting. And all the other debaters were worried about the military threats. Yeah. And I just couldn't understand what they're talking about because military threats come from hovering above the surface of the earth, right? Mm -hmm. And we live on a two-dimensional surface. We live on the surface of the earth, mm -hmm. but space is all about the third dimension, getting far from earth. <laughs> so if you go to Mars or you yeah. go to a star, another star, there is no military threat. What are we talking about? Space is all about, <laughs> you know, feeling that, you know, we are one civilization, in fact, not fighting each other, yeah. just going far and having aspirations for something that goes beyond military threats. Yeah. So why would we be worried that the space race will lead? That's actually an, brilliant. I didn't, you know, there's something, there's, in our discourse about it, the space race is sometimes made synonymous with like the Cold War or something like that. Or, right. Or with wars, but really, yeah, there was a lot of ego tied up in that. I remember, I mean, it's still, still to this day, there's a lot of pride that Russians, the Soviet Union was the first to space. And there's a lot of pride on the American side that was the first on the moon. But yeah, you're exactly right. Like there's no aggression, nations. there's yeah. no wars. And, and, and beyond that, if you think about the global economy mm -hmm. right now, uh, there is a commercial interest. That's yeah. why Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk are interested about you know, Mars and so forth. There is a commercial interest which is international. It's, not, it's driven by money, yes. not by, na by pride. Yeah. And you know, nations can sign treaties. First of all, there are lots of treaties that were signed even before the First World War and the Second World War and the World War took place. So mm -hmm. who cares, you know, like humans, Treaties do not safeguard anything, you know? But beyond that, even if nations sign treaties about space exploration, you might still find commercial entities that will find a way to get their launches. And, you know, so I think we should rethink space. It has nothing to do with national pride. Once again, nothing to do with our egos. Mm -hmm. It's about exploration. And the biggest problem I think to human in human history is that is, is, is that humans tend to think about egos and about their, their own personal uh, image mm -hmm. rather than look at the big picture, you know? We will not be around for long. We are just occupying a small space right now. Let's move out of this, you know, the way that Oscar Wilde said, I think is the best. He said, all of us are in the gutters, but some of us are looking at the stars. Yeah, and, and the more of us are looking at the stars, the likelier we are to uh, to this for this thing for this little experiment we have going on to last last a while as opposed to end too quickly. Yeah, you, I mean, it's not just about science of being humble. It's it's about the survival of the human species. That's right. Is being is being humble to me. It's incredibly inspiring the Starshot project of. I mean, there's something magical about being able to go to another habitable planet and take a picture even. Mm -hmm. I mean, within our lifetime, I mean, that, that uh, with crazy technology too, which is, it, it's- I, I should tell you how it was conceived. So um, I was at the time, um, so after six months passed, yeah. uh, after the visit of Yuri Miller, uh, I was, usually I go in December during the winter break, I go to Israel. Um, I, I used to go to see my family and, uh, I get a phone call um, just before the weekend started. They get a phone call. Uh, Yuri would like you to present your concept mm -hmm. um, in two weeks at his home. And uh, I said, well, uh, thank you for letting me know because I'm uh, actually out of the door of the hotel to go to a goat farm <laughs> in, in, in the Negev, in the southern part of Israel with, because my wife wanted to have sort of... Uh, to go to a place that is removed from civilization, so to speak. So we went to that goat farm and you know, I need to make the presentation and uh, there was no internet connectivity except in the office of the goat farm. So the following morning at uh, 6 a.m. I sit with my back to the office of that goat farm looking at goats that were newly born and uh, typing into my laptop the presentation, you know, the PowerPoint presentation about, you know, our ambitions for visiting the nearest star. Yes. 
And that was very surreal to me that, uh, you know, going... <laughs> <laughs> oh, like our origins in many ways, this very primitive origins and uh, our dreams exactly. of, uh, of looking out that is brilliant.